I miss? Good old 3D platformers. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, Gex the Gecko, I, I guess. Those were the days. Back then, game developers had to anthropomorphize animals to get us interested. There was no Nathan Drake, that's for sure. I miss those times, you know? God, I wish we had a game like that on Ste... On... On Ste... So, um, so how does this work? Do I just put it on there or do they, do they just get the money? Uh, man, you're right. You're right. No, I do. I feel fucking weird. What? No? You... Do you not feel weird? No, I'm fine. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Are the air in here or something? Or? No, I think the air's fine. <sighs> <sighs> Man, I don't feel good at all. You want you want to take a break or something? No. no. <sighs> we, we can come back to it. Uh, no. Uh. Oh. Good day there, Sheilas and Drongos. Just playing on my good old didgeridoodle. Ain't it a fair dinkum of a day? Eh, Ripper, eh? Whoa, is this a Sonic game? Seriously, listen to the music here and the way he slides about on the logs like he's grinding. That and he's got this horn of fur jutting out of his forehead like Billy Hatcher has. Gilly, the Bunyip Elder. G'day, mate. It's time you knew the truth. Okay, I don't know if this was intentional, but I love how Ty's like a modern Australian and this, this Bunyip Elder is Aboriginal. Sort of like, G'day, mate. Sorry we took over your sacred land and forced your people to near extinction. Yeah, anyway, look at these sacred wall paintings. Years ago, a great battle was fought over the fate of five mystic talismans. So this is Boss Cass, the bad guy. I mean, of course he's a bad guy. Evil looking eyes, fluffy eyebrows, some sort of fleshy hill on his head, beak. Classic bad guy look. Thank <laughs> you. 
in a fucking giant robot. You're in a giant robot that shoots missiles and just took out half a lush rainforest. What is your definition of the natural order? Cass, you have the capacity to create some giant robot that can trample forests and fire rockets, but you forgot how a fucking boomerang works. That's the definition of the Aboriginal word, boom to go and orang to fucking come back again. Seriously, man, get your shit together. So Cass is angry that there's a class of animals of the phylogenetic tree that possess a neocortex in the brain, hair, three middle ear bones and mammary glands. He's so angry, in fact, that he wants to use five magical talismans to send them all to a realm called the Dreaming, allowing reptiles and birds to rule the world. It's up to you to find the talismans before he does. It's up to me to save my family. Oi, Ty! Are you okay? Okay, hold on a sec. This is Maori. Maori? Miauri? Your guide throughout the game. Before we let the intro cinematic end, I'm going to be adding subtitles down below whenever he speaks, so you can understand the frankly mountain of slang this guy emits. G'day, Julius. Struck me lucky. Righto, type. There's no point in mucking about. So I've got my Australian hat, I've got my board shorts, my Steam controller. Let's see if the game is as good as I remember. So here we have Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Steam has a lot of PC ports known to be a right pain in the arse, but even for early access, this port is gorgeous. The graphics have been spiffed up, the sound is as vivid and as catchy as I remember in Thai... and Thai... Okay, let's talk about Thai's design. I've never actually seen a Tasmanian tiger, considering they were all sent to the Dreaming and, you know, not made extinct because of the inherent greed of man via the fur trade. No, not that at all. But I think they've created quite a good character here. The shorts are a nice touch, with some gloves because, you know, he's using boomerangs. Common sense. But am I comfortable with the overall Australianness of the character? The floral shorts, the boomerangs, the excessive use of slang. Ty and his mates seem to be all caricatures of the modern Australian stereotype, and do I have a problem with that? Well, considering I'm a bit of an Aussie-file myself, I wouldn't say so. Besides, Chrome Studios is Australian. If it was, say, a German company trying to recreate an Australian character after watching two seasons of Neighbours and Crocodile Dundee, I'd be a little bit more uncomfortable. But overall, the general setting of Ty is refreshing and definitely welcomed. But that mouth, man! It's fine in game, but the cutscenes? <laughs> The first few levels are admittedly rather easy. They show the mechanics of the game rather well. There's some swimming in one level, rainforest in another. I like the varying environments the game presents us. We're told by Julius, some frickin' koala nerd, that we have to find thunder eggs that will allow us to power up his machines, which will locate and capture talismans. Simple, right? Huh? And thunder eggs are the key to powering the machine. Thunder eggs? Oh, they're as rare as hen's teeth, mate. Oh, is that a fact, Mari? Because when we enter the first level, there's literally one 20 feet from the fucking start. Guess there's going to be a lot of hens smiling tonight, Mari, because you were fucking wrong. Hello there. What's that for? What's that for? What's that for? Get out of it. Much like Spyro, Ty has different methods of attack. He can throw boomerangs with the X button and bite with the B button. In turn, only certain enemies can be harmed by a certain style of attack, not to mention that throughout the game, Ty receives different boomerangs with special powers that are strong against some enemies. It's a great way of adding some variation to the usually bland combat platformers struggle with. I will admit the variety of puzzles and situations in which the boomerangs are used is limited, but it's still a nice touch and I'm happy to have the choice. That bite though... That bite just looks familiar. Like, like I've seen it before. Look out down below, Ty is on the go, and he's got his rangs, he hits the guys in the face, yeah. So, we get to the first boss, and let's see, oh god! 
you just know this guy's tough because the dude's got a freaking mum tattoo. Not only is this guy as tough as nails, he respects his mother, and that's more cooler than anything. The fight isn't difficult. In fact, let's have a pop quiz. The boss is a bull. So what method is there of defeating him? Do we A, remind the bovine of the crushing reality of existence we all must suffer through on our inexorable march to the grave? B, express our undying passion for him and hope he succumbs to a violent bout of homosexual panic? Or C, make him run into stuff. It's B. With our first boss victory, we have enough Thunder Eggs to get a new elemental rang, the Flame Rang, which unlocks the next three levels. Ty does a good job of introducing enemies and obstacles for the new boomerang to overcome, like these cricket lizards whose bats must be burnt before they can be defeated. Burnt to ashes. Local bully Neddy has extinguished all the lights that show my way home, and now I don't know where to go. It's not that I'm scared of the dark or anything, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. This is what makes Ty stand out above Crash and in some ways Spyro. It's almost on the level of Ratchet and Clank in terms of humour. Although a little cheesy and childish at times, it's endearing to see Ty show its unique brand of writing in a genre that plays to such comedy so well. All the portals to the levels are found in a hub called Rainbow Springs. Rainbow Springs is nothing special. It acts in the same way the certain overworlds worked in Spyro, except the area lacks any sort of collectibles. It's just to get to other levels. In total, the game has 10 levels with a few boss levels added in. You have done well, my friend. The information you supplied is invaluable. So someone thinks they can stop me obtaining all the talismans! Of course he will never succeed! I want this meddling mammal stopped at any cost! Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Can we just, for a second, why is this dude, okay, look, I hate using this term and I can't think of anything else, he's mincing, the big dude's just like mincing off into the background, and there's another evil Tasmanian tiger I guess, oh I don't care, that's just so perfect, oh, recovering from that, the game continues in this manner, fight a boss, get a talisman, cutscene, get a new rang, and this time, the new rang is the Frosty Rang. What I appreciate is that Ty doesn't fall to the Metroid Prime style of upgrades, where 90% of the first area is inaccessible until the very end of the game where you get the fucking Grapefruit Launcher upgrade or something and you have to go all the way back. Each new set of levels gives rise to new uses for the rangs you already have. We get to a new level, Outback Safari, where we actually use the first boss to ride about on. And although the big dude slides about like his hooves are made of butter and inertia is a concept that only bovines are immune from, it's refreshing to have such a drastic and entertaining departure to what we've already been made accustomed to. Some people might judge me for this, but considering how much I slam Billy Hatcher music in my past video, I'm not a huge fan of music from platformers in general. I prefer music that enhances the atmosphere and brings about the emotions in the scene, which is kind of hard in a game where you just jump about. But the music in Thai works well enough. It's very tribal and it fits the theme of most levels, with some didgeridoos added in here and there as you would expect. The sound design works as well, even if the offensively loud boomerang noises take a little getting used to. Oh, oh, and my previous point about music and platformers does not apply to the stunning soundtrack of Spyro 1 by Stuart Copeland of The Police. You go first. No, you go first. Well, I went first last time. Get in here! Oh. <laughs> Classic. 
Did you take care of that troublesome Tasmanian tiger? Well, that's just the thing, see? He's kind of, um, well, uh, good. You okay, boss? Come over here. Just come over here. I won't hurt you. Now, what's my name? Uh, Cat? No, that's my last name. What's my first name? Oh, oh, I know, I know. Let him answer. Uh, what? That's right. Wait a sec, his name is legit Boss Cass? I think this guy has a genuine reason for wanting to take over the world, considering the amount of bullying he must have received at school. His first name is Boss, and those fucking eyebrows! And I hate only Ow. Boss around Ooh. here! And I do all the thinking! Now get out of my sight! Throughout the game, there have been several collectibles to find. Bilbies, opals, stuff like that. But they just produce thunder eggs. Five bilbies and 300 opals on each level gives you a thunder egg each. But there's also golden cogs. These things are used by Julius, the nerd we talked about earlier, to create techno rings, which are non-compulsory rings to unlock. Some lock onto enemies, some zoom in with some sort of sniper scope, and there's one that splits into multiple rings. Ty, you were... Uh... You okay there, buddy? You're looking a bit more jittery than usual. Can we call you an ambulance? Or no, you okay? Yeah, you're okay. It's nice to have the option, but some rings are more important than others. For instance, the Chrono Rang, the one you unlock by finding all the golden cogs in the game, just slows down enemies. Whereas the Kaboomerang kills all enemies in the same postcode as you, as well as breaking any hidden crates nearby. What I'm trying to say is that the Kaboomerang's OP. Please nerf Chrome, thanks! So the last three levels go by rather quickly. It's nice to see the optional missions in each vary the gameplay a little here and there. Reminds me of Spyro 2, my favourite of the series. Having little side missions introduced by characters always made me feel like some purple fire-breathing handyman. Uh, dragon. And Ty has that too. They can range from mini boss fights to finding koala cubs. Howdy who? The name's Lenny. Lenny the liar bird. Liar bird. Liar bird. Liar. Liar. It must mean something. There must be something. Think! We have got some trouble in this dusty old desert. Ah! Fucking knew it! He's a liar! I knew it! After we beat all three bosses and recover the three talismans, it's time to head to Boss Cass's lair. And at this stage in the game, it's starting to feel like the end. Uh, Rouge? Who dares disturb my slumber? Oh, no, no, I was wrong. Oh, I was so wrong. Now, as a kid, I just let this next bit go, but listen to this. I told you we'd meet again. I'm going to enjoy this. What? What are you doing? I'm giving you a hand, mate. Let go of me. I... I you... You're gonna regret this. Okay, you got that memorized? It's very important that you remember that. The level is short and after we scare off our doppelganger, who's canonically labeled Sly by the way, you know, Ty's brother, Sly, and his quiet sister, Shy, not to mention the twins, Nye and Guy, there's another sibling as well, Bai, but well, Ty's dad wasn't too supportive of him. Final boss. Glad to see that Cass is respecting the natural order by building another giant-sized death robot. But hell, Boomerangs took the thing down the first time and I'll be damned if Boss Cass has the foresight to design against them this time! The first stage is quite simple, take out the flamethrowers and head into the bowels of the robot. Then we... Ty? Calm down, Ty. Ty, what are you doing, you madman? 
Beauty! Bubba! Bonza! I got one! Shoot No one misses with my mate. No one misses with my No mate. worries. No worries. Unless you're best curse. Okay, I never noticed this as a kid, but legit ten minutes ago the dude said, You're gonna regret this. And then the very next instance he shows up, he helps Ty. Regret what? What were we supposed to regret? Don't think I didn't notice that, writers. Sly! What are you doing? What I should have done years ago. I'm giving him a hand, mate. After all I did for you? Yes, yeah, Sly, you bastard. After all he's done for you, like not including you in his insane plan to send every mammal on the planet into the dream world, you were the exception, Sly, and you just stab him in the back? Poor form. So, everything ends with this, I don't know, telepathically controlled boomerang section that seems to go on forever. Sort of like the Death Star sort of thing. Not that it isn't interesting, but it seems a tad anticlimactic to how the fight could have gone. Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, a game for once on this show I can eagerly recommend. There is room for improvement, I mean the controls are stiff, the cameras are touch uncooperative, but the redeeming qualities of Ty lie in its design, its setting and the overall concept. Sure, Ty copies many of its core aspects from Mario, Spyro or even Crash, but it stands out on its own as an engaging and fun, exciting 3D platformer, besides name a Crash or Spyro game you're going to get on Steam. All of them are on the PS Store. Back on its original release in 2003, IGN concluded that the game was for die-hard fans of the 3D platforming genre. And considering I am a die-hard fan, I can say it's worth your time. The new 2016 team are amazing, and they are constantly updating and bug-fixing the game. That being said, for an early access game on Steam, it's pretty much faultless apart from one or two bugs and glitches. But nothing that's game-breaking. $8.99 well spent. Thank you, Chrome Studios. I hope to see two and three follow suit. God, that was good. I feel like adventurous, you know, after doing that. We need some way to celebrate getting through this review. I know what to do, grab the camera. Grab the camera, come on, let's go. No, it's okay. no, seriously, grab the camera. Okay. Okay, I, I'm, we're out here, I don't know what we're doing. No, 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 it looked really cool. Are you ready? Yeah, ready? Okay, ready? I'm recording, yeah. Hello fellow Bin Raiders, and thank you so much for watching. So, yeah, thanks. I mean, if you like the video, then I guess... It's the truth, mate. Don't bore them to death. Leave a sign and let me have a go. <clears throat> G'day everyone, and thanks so much for watching the video. Ty here, reminding you to give us a like if you enjoyed. Tell us what you thought down under. Hey, maybe even subscribe. Also, why not check out a mate of mine, Stig Weems. You can find his website down below as well. Check that out. It'd be a ripper. You finished? Hey, no worries, mate. Uh -oh. But seriously, guys, thanks once again from both Ty and myself. That was, of course, the legendary Stig Weems, who was kind enough to provide some lines. So check him out in the links down below. His production company, Mezzanine Productions, and his personal website will both be down there. Being the voice of one of my favourite characters, I couldn't be more grateful to him, so thank you so much, Stig. Furthermore, be sure to check out Ty on Steam with the link down below, as always. If you enjoyed the episode, check out the last one I did on Moonbase 332, a game not set in Australia. And on the subject of Ty, a favourite channel of mine, Boomerangs by Vic, created the Deadly Rang Anchor Boomerang from the game. He's not sponsoring me at all, but I love his work and wanted to link his video and website down below. If you're a fan of Ty or pieces of wood that return to you after you throw them, do check out his store. He makes loads of crazy designs, many of them inspired by gaming. But that's all for now, Bin Raiders. Keep bin raiding, and I'll see you next time. I'll never